Oh, sleep, it's so overrated. <laughs> Actually, it's not. It's what us parents think about the most. It's what we despair about, it's what we cry about, it's what we talk about constantly. It's even what we fantasize about. Let's face it, once the baby's had a good night's sleep and we've had a few hours sleep, everything feels so much better. I was up every two hours with this one last night and I'm exhausted. So if you do have a baby that won't settle through the night, you're in the right place. Did you know that the average new baby deprives its parents of around 350 to 400 hours worth of sleep a year? That's the equivalent of a night a week. It's no wonder all new parents are exhausted. And night waking is a survival skill. They have to wake up to tell us if they're hungry or in pain, but it doesn't make it any easier to deal with. And as soon as you think you've got it sorted, they're drifting off, you pop them into their cot, they wake right back up again. It happens every single time. That's because it takes about 20 minutes for a baby to get into a deep sleep. So what do we do? What is this magic answer for getting our babies to sleep through the night? Do we do sleep training? Is that okay? And if so, when do you start? What about co-sleeping? Is that the answer? Is there a more gentle kind of in-between method that we can try? Or do we just have to accept that we've got a newborn in the house and we're not going to be getting any sleep for a while? Then they get a little bit older. <laughs> you think you've got it sorted and something else happens. Sleep regression. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> Teething, illness. There's always something that's going to disrupt our baby's sleep routine. However you parent, whatever you're going through, no matter how exhausted you're feeling, there is a mum here at Channel Mum who totally gets it and feels exactly the same. Let's face it, we are all in this together and the Channel Mum Village is really here to help. We're here to compare the textbook and the truth. What's it really like with a baby at home? Here's a few of our mums sharing their honest thoughts and tips on baby's sleep. Now I'm gonna get some of mine. <laughs> Now we all know that sleeping is a very sensitive topic amongst parents because we all want it and most of us can't get enough of it. Why did no one tell me that we'd get literally no sleep? Isn't it every like parent's dream to have a restful, sleepful night and not be deprived? Deprived of sleep, it's certainly mine. And I know that with Sophia, we battled with sleep issues until she was one. And um, with Florence, I have decided that we ain't doing that because it's just not fun for anyone. James is now 10 months old and we've been sleep training him for 15 days. And apart from one or two days in the whole of this 15 days, he is sleeping through the night, which is amazing. So personally, I'm actually very anti all forms of sleep training. I'm, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a hippie. And we'll hear these horror stories about babies crying until they're sick or parents kind of being told to, to be horrible to their kids and you know that's not what sleep training is about if it's done properly. I have done controlled crying and I would do controlled crying again if I needed to which I know is kind of contentious with some people. I just feel like Sleep is really important. It's important for parents and it's important for children. So the method is leave them for five minutes crying, um, go in and say it's night time now, bedtime, very firmly, lie them back down and leave. You know the drill. Wait for ten minutes, do the same. And we only ever had, I think, ten minutes. No longer than that, you know, um, no kind of leaving him to just cry and cry for like an hour or anything. We decided to go with the pick up, put down method, which if you haven't heard of it, it's basically, I feel like a really gentle sleep training method. Yeah, when he would cry, I would go in, uh, pick him up, reassure him, get him calm again, and then put him back down again. So the idea was making sure that he knew that I'm here, I'm here to kind of tend to every need as a little baby, but it is bedtime and you're gonna learn to go to sleep so um, put him back down again, but he was never really crying for very long and he never, definitely never got kind of distressed or anything, which is what I wanted. He did it, he started sleeping through and it was the best decision I made, it's made the biggest difference to my life. I won't let her fall asleep in my arms because then she's just using, re replacing the bottle with me and using me as a comfort and I don't want her to need 
me every night to get to sleep, if you know what I mean. I want her to be able to wake up and then settle herself back to sleep in the middle of the night. Because everybody wants sleeping, baby! Don't they, Flory? He goes to bed, he loves going to bed now. It's a total different, different situation. We can socialise, I can talk to my husband again. Our attitude to Sienna's sleep has always been very relaxed and... Yeah, hasn't it? Yeah? Just kind of letting things happen as it happens. Routine, routine, routine. I think babies like routine. Children like routine. Children like to know what their boundaries are. They like to know, you know, have a clear framework to kind of live in. And I think it's really important for kids that they know when bedtime is, that they're ex when yeah. they're expected to go to sleep. We her and put her down upstairs rather than having her downstairs with us and then bring her up when we go to bed. So she has her bath and it's all very calm. Once she comes upstairs, she does not go back downstairs. I know the risks of co-sleeping. I know what not to do, and I know how to try and make it as safe as possible. So we make sure we follow all of those rules, and that's been working quite well for us. We still bed share now. He comes into our bed at four o'clock most mornings. Breastfeeding and co-sleeping or bed sharing goes really, really kind of hand in hand. It's very easy to just roll over and feed your baby back to sleep it's very convenient i find that i get more sleep doing this it's true the old saying the nights are long but the years are short and i think you know if it works for me now i will do it he's not going to want to sleep in your room when he's 13 is he well that's what yeah. i think i really <laughs> blooming hope not seriously he's out i feel like a bad mum most days because i know that i'm doing something which is my own fault and i'm struggling for something that i caused but I think we all do things like that. We all do what feels right at the time and then we suffer the consequences later and then we just don't know how to make it right. We need to make selfish choices. You know, we're mothers, we're not martyrs and we are people and we matter. Say, hello everybody. I'm gonna be a really good girl tonight and sleep through the night. Oh yeah, that's me. Stop joking. So there you have it. I hope that has helped in some way. Head on over to Channel Mum to check out all the other amazing baby and sleep vlogs to help get you through this time. It will get better. And it's already quite good, isn't it?